and welcome to Smoke Training. In this episode, we'll walk through the simple process of conforming an edit that was started in FCP10. We'll look at how to export the XML from FCP10, take a look at the importing options in Smoke, and we'll look at a few tips for a successful conform. Over in FCP10, here is our edit ready to be exported to XML. Go back to the project screen and from here select File, Export XML. To make life more simple, save the XML in the same folder where all the media for the sequence is stored. Let's name the XML and click Save. Back over in Smoke 2013, we import our XML by accessing the Media Hub. Navigate to the folder where our XML and associated media is located. Let's just check a few of the import settings available below. In the General tab, Create Project Media will determine whether you link to your media files or you let Smoke transcode and store the media. In pre-release version 1 of Smoke 2013, you will have better results by linking to your footage rather than letting Smoke create and manage the media. Over in Sequence Import Options, the Max Up Level field tells Smoke how many folders to look above the current folder when searching for media. Leave this at zero if you have stored the XML in the same folder as your media. If you choose to select Save Sources Separately, Smoke will create a subfolder containing all the media files that are referred to in the sequence. Now we are ready to conform the sequence. Drag the XML from the Media Hub over to the Media Library title and release. Smoke starts the import process. Take a look at the message display bar at the bottom left corner to check the process of the import. When it is finished, you can give the folder Smoke created a name. Inside this folder you will find the sequence that has been created as a result of importing the XML. And if you chose Save Sources Separately, there will be a subfolder which includes all the reference media. Now head back to the Timeline workspace. Double click the imported sequence to load it. As you can see from the timeline, Smoke has recreated the timeline as per the edit in FCP10. Something to look out for with the import of XML from FCP10 I discovered if the first so-called track of audio is contained within a storyline, as seen here, the audio will not come through in the conform process. A useful tip when conforming a sequence, make sure your project matches the settings of the sequence you are importing as far as resolution and bit depth is concerned. Otherwise, Smoke will apply a resize effect to your shots so that matches your project settings, and that will require extra rendering. A useful way of checking the bit depth of your incoming footage is by browsing your clips in the Media Hub. Double click a clip to view the details about your footage. If necessary, create a new project before you can form the sequence, so that the settings match that of the majority of the media contained in your edit. Let's take a recap of some of the key points in this episode. A good practice is to save the XML in the same folder as your media. This means Smoke will not have to perform extensive searching to relocate your footage. With this pre-release version 1 of the software, you may have better results linking to your media rather than letting Smoke create and manage the media for you. Make sure your project settings match that of your sequence you are conforming, otherwise you'll be required to do extra rendering due to the resize effects that get added if the resolution and bit depth do not match your project. So be sure to create a new project first with correct settings if required. The conforming tools in Smoke 2013 is still being developed, so head to the forum over at the area and share your experience with the pre-release trial. That brings to a close this episode of Smoke Training. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned for future episodes of Smoke Training that give you short, clear tutorials that get you up to speed on the basics fast. Uh.